Barbie. 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 Barbie day one. I play the original Barbie, kind of the first one created. She refers to herself as stereotypical Barbie. She says it in the movie, like, I'm the Barbie you think of when somebody says, think of a Barbie, that's, that's me. me. And Margot really does look like what you think of when you think of a Barbie. You think of the most beautiful, cheerful, friendly, blonde lady you've ever seen, and that's Margot. You really think you're Barbie? Yeah. When I first heard it was going to be Margot, it was obviously amazing because she is such an incredible actor. And we started discussing what makes a doll, what makes our language, how to approach it, with none of us knowing what it may be. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Can I sit in the front? No. I immediately bought 24 books about the history of Barbie, books about modern day Barbies. They are books on how Barbies influence generations of girls and people. We originally played around a lot with a more doll-like look. Trying to like have subtle contouring in where her like joints would be if she was a doll. Um, maybe face was lighter than the body. And ultimately it was like a fun idea, but you didn't really want to look at that for two hours. Best if you don't think about it too much. So we went back to the idea of just every Barbie and every Ken should look like the most beautiful, pretty version of themselves. Greta and I were discussing at first that possibly she would just have one look. And then very quickly as we started discussing the story more and more, we realized really that she needs to have many, many different looks and basically depict many types of stereotypical Barbie. Yes! Hi! Like, oh You're my like, God. he's kind of dead, but he's also back for he's this a, moment. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, good. That's wow. amazing. This is day four or five of tests to determine, you know, which camera we wanted. Looking at the colors on Margot and looking at the makeup and making sure that it's Barbie perfect. It's perfectly perfect. Just seeing sort of like, well, how does it look on camera? How does it look against the colors we've already chosen? And then always asking myself, like, when I was five, what did I want to look like? And probably the answer is like a mermaid unicorn princess. So anything that looks like that. The magic of Barbie dolls is that everything is just slightly more perfect than what you'd want in the real world. It was about sort of achieving that creamy glowiness. It looked painted in the best way. So it, it looks natural, but it's not. <laughs> simple, simple eye with simple natural eye shape is what's most doll-like. Simplicity is just what makes your eye look bigger. And then I think mascara is very, very important because that makes all the eyelashes and the shape of a doll with those kind of very defined eyelashes. She's put on the mascara and it's lipstick. slightly, yes. And then sometimes she puts on lipstick depending on the outfit. Depending on the outfit. The lipstick's changed to whatever we thought was good with clothes. Also, a lovely nude lips is what Barbie Margot had, and lots of Barbies had simple, beautiful lipstick, lipstick color. The flatness of the whole makeup and the perfection of it all without too much contouring, that was quite important. And it's very, very simple and clean. And that, to me, in my mind, that's what dolls look like. You look so beautiful, Barbie. Thanks, Barbie. I feel so beautiful. I think what it needs to be, so that making uh, Margot's wigs to have more Oh, yeah. Up here. Yes, yes. This still feels too yellow. Too yellow. Yeah. Of course, having the impossible hair is such a Barbie thing. And so we just these amazing, gorgeous wigs with hair down to the waist. It's impossibly voluminous, but a really pretty color. We spent at least a year looking at stuff and talking about how we wanted it to be. And so much of it is the hair. That shiny plastic Barbie hair is so iconic. Everyone knows what it looks like. So cool. Yeah. We went through different versions of weaving plastic hair into regular wig hair. Nirvana actually made a whole wig of it for Margot. It was very interesting trying to find the right shade of blonde. I started off with the color that the first 1950s Barbie is, which is quite a yellow blonde. And in fact, we kept that one because we do see her as a 1950s Barbie in a stripy black and white swimsuit. 
So we kept that color, but we didn't want her to have the color all the way through. Barbie changed everything. Then she changed it all again. Maybe you're gonna do another version of the wig that has more platinum in it and less yellow. They're calling it Grace Kelly Blonde, but I think it, it, it looks really luxe, but fun at the same time, which is always the needle we're trying to thread. We basically allocated all of her 14 wigs and 14 different looks to different costumes. It all started from knowing how Greta wanted her to wake up in scene one on a good day and what we wanted from the bad day and eventually joins the real world and stops being a doll. And I suddenly thought, well, then she has to have normal world hair. So then was another wig to make and another look to make when she becomes just an ordinary girl. Hi. It's incredible to see the progression of the whole looks. And when you look back and when you revisit all the different looks and when the film is put together, we will suddenly see huge differences between the looks and that will be fun, I think. It was a fun process just to figure out what the look would be on screen. And I just felt so pretty every day. <laughs> I felt so pretty as Barbie just like with the wigs and all this hair and professionals doing your makeup and just, yeah, really felt great every day. And that's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs>